Uh, hello! Welcome to what I think is episode 8 of the music podcast. Uh, I double-checked. I'm pretty sure this is 8, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll correct myself, uh, for YouTube later. So, albums this week. Uh, Horse the Band. Uh, which fucking album did I pick? I, a Natural Death, that one. Uh, Juice World, Legends Never Die. And Earth's, uh, Bees Made Honey and the Lion's Skull. So, good, good bunch of albums this week. Um, I guess we'll start with the Horse the Band one first, because why not? Sure. So, a little bit of background on Horse the Band. Uh, they're kind of a metalcore band that mixes, um, like, electronic elements that are reminiscent of, like, 8-bit video games and stuff, and that's kind of kind of their whole gimmick. Um, I guess as a joke, they called themselves Nintendo Core, and then they, yeah. and then later on they tried to like distance <laughs> themselves from that label. So, so on their last album, A Natural Death, uh, not A Natural Death, uh, their last album, Desperate Living, they tried to yeah! move away from that sound and do other things. But, um, Stallman, thank you for the thank you for the raid. Also, welcome. You're ju you're just in time. Um. So yeah, uh, Horse the Band's a pretty pretty interesting band. Uh, I like them a lot. Um, actually, speaking of which, after the podcast, we're going to be checking out their Earth Tour documentary, which was a completely self-funded world tour that they attempted back in 2008-ish. The documentary is about 10 hours long and is separated into six parts. So obviously, we're not going to watch the whole thing in one sitting, but we're going to watch <laughs> maybe a couple hours of it and then... Uh, over the next couple weeks, we'll tr we'll uh, we'll do regular watch parties where where we watch some of it. So it's it's really interesting. Uh, I'll uh, it, it's a good time. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, this album, a natural death. Um, let me pull up my notes here because I I don't have them. Actually, I don't think I made notes for this. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's just kind of metalcore with some like eight bit Nintendo sounding stuff. Uh, some highlights off of this for me are murder. Um, I think we're both suffering from the same crushing metaphysical crisis, which just has a really <laughs> good fucking name. Um, Kangaroo Rooster Meadows, just because it's fucking compared to the rest of the album, it's just it's silly, just for the sake of being there, I guess. And uh, I really like uh, his Purple Majesty and uh sex raptor which sex raptor is from what i can tell a song about being vored by a dinosaur because why not oh no <laughs> that's some passenger shit level <laughs> stuff yeah it is uh you didn't miss anything stallman we're, we're just getting started but uh yeah that that's that's what i think about the album i don't really like every track on this thing i, I there's just a handful that i like but i don't think the album's bad um, yeah I, when I heard the name Horse the Band, I was thinking, okay, this is either some parody shit or maybe somewhere the, along the lines of a Pussifer or something. Uh, oh, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it started up and I started hearing screaming and I'm like, oh, this is not what I thought it was. Okay, this is what we're doing. <laughs> um, the the startling secret of Super Sapphire was pretty good and Face of Bear <laughs> they, the whole album is just kind of weird upbeat fun so I dig it yeah, yeah I, I was I, <laughs> I love metalcore like even the, the, the trashy shit into the good shit I just love the entire spectrum of metalcore um, and it is, I had kind of the same history with Horse the Band as Between the Buried and Me, where I know who they are. I've heard maybe a sparse couple of songs, but I never like sat down and listened to something. And I listened to this album and I really fucking liked it. Um, I love their fusion. I know you mentioned it. I love their fusion of the metalcore and electric, electronic. <clears throat> um, and I, I noticed in, in some of the songs, I noticed the, the, the quote unquote Nintendo core. And like I was like, wait, I know other bands have done this. Is this like I was like trying to like think? I was like, it's like, is this where it started? Because like my my one friend loves like the Nintendo Core kind of stuff, 
So I was like, I was wondering, I was like, is this where it came from or where it started? Yeah, totally. um, yeah I uh, personally, I really liked the the first track. I liked, how do you say that? Hyperborea. Uh, I liked Murder. And I also really liked uh, the Red Tornado. Just just overall, another band that I'm like, now I have to listen to more. <laughs> yeah, um, j- just some like random stuff. So the song Red Tornado, I hadn't heard before. I'd never listened to this whole album in its entirety, just a couple of tracks off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Red Tornado is apparently a DC superhero who is an android that is possessed by a wind elemental, and that's like his whole power. <laughs> yep. um, you never knew about I, that? I didn't know about I him. I did not know about that. Yep, he's in Justice League on the animated TV series. Yeah, uh, Young Justice, I, th- I think one of them. I, d- I don't remember. Um, yeah. But yeah, Horse the Band has an EP called the Pizza EP, which has a very interesting story. Uh, so basically, they were on tour. I think they were doing warp tour in Chicago, and they stopped at this one restaurant and had pizza. <clears throat> and as the story goes, the pizza was so good they just left the tour and began writing this album about fucking pizza. <laughs> uh, and so, there, there's there, there, pizza. there's yeah, there's tracks on the tracks on the album are called "Crippled by Pizza." Uh, pizzeria in the pizzeria, but the last pizzeria is spelled like diarrhea, so it's pizza diarrhea. Um, oh god. Uh, the album comes in like a pizza box, and the track listing is on like pizza coupons. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> I fucking love it. Um, and I think they show this in the, the Earth Tour documentary, but they have like, mm-hmm. I want to say that they have like this custom Game Boy cartridge or something that they used to program like some of the synth stuff like the 8-bit mm-hmm. sounding stuff mm-hmm. uh but yeah they're, they're interesting hmm. but anyway uh i guess we'll move on to uh whoever wants to go next i can do mine i guess <clears throat> okay so um I don't listen to a ton of doom metal. My buddy Dallas mostly listens to this. He's the guy that I smoke with a lot. But um, he put this on one night, and I ascended. <laughs> and I fell in love with this band specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, their whole discography is pretty good. Uh, it Mike explained it pretty well, but uh, it's basically like... Cowboy Doom Metal is the easiest way to put it. <laughs> yeehaw. Um, yeah. Yeehaw. Uh, this is the type of thing that plays immediately after uh, Strength of the World by Avenged Sevenfold plays hmm. for the main character's theme. This is like the ambience music for that. Um, it, it's good. It's really good. Some hits or like hits for me off of this album are Omen's Importance uh engine of ruin like both omens importance by the way there's two of them and uh the title track the bees made honey in the lion skull i like this album a lot yeah i i this was a very i loved having this as just another like continually like showing more doom metal that i I fucking really like, <laughs> um, and I, I did. I definitely did this. I think it was the the Sunday or the next day that it happened that that you said the album. I just got absolutely fucking blasted and listened to like the first half of this album. Oh yeah, that's the perfect way to do it. And just got lost. Like I was like, what the fuck is? G-? I I understood a little bit of why you said drone. Like there was a little bit of drone stuff in there. But there was a point, like, in the second track, To Rise to Glory, I wasn't, like, I wasn't necessarily hallucinating. But I was, I was fucking tripping. <laughs> That's oh, what this type oh. of music is. It makes most oh, there's Baghead. Oh, God. <laughs> Mad's oh, did actually he went. transcend? Oh. Wait. Mike's doing a thing. <laughs> Solomon, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I happen to, I happen to, to have to have me a sun shirt because, of course, I fucking do. Oh, Hell God. yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, were you, were you done? Because I got up after oh. Stallman posted that to go grab that and couldn't hear a thing you were saying. Oh no, I just I noticed you were gone and I noticed Matt. I was like, oh oh god, what's he doing? What's he getting? Is he getting something? Um, it's it's the, relevant. Uh, the the last thing is just I, I fucking loved this. I loved this. I loved it. the like I said before. I loved listening to sleep. So I'm gonna have to continue to just continue to listen to more doom metal. <laughs> I can send you some more I, stuff privately if you want. I Conley. also, I also have, bet. I also have a recommendation for you. Well, um, Jesus. Uh, so yeah, my my thoughts on this. Uh, I'm not really too familiar with Earth. Um, I know that their their album Earth Two is kind of well liked, and that's kind of, from what I understand, a mix of drone there's more drone on that album mixed with some of the doom stuff so i'll have to check it out eventually uh but this like i said in my notes it's just i put it on and yeehaw let me get my fucking cowboy hat <laughs> and get my horse and ride out in the desert for uh for a week and yeah. have me a good old time red dead redemption it. here we go uh um, but yeah it was really good i i liked it a lot it's definitely uh, a unique style of doom i guess in that it does kind of just evoke riding through the desert on a fucking horse with your <laughs> with your cowboy hat on uh but yeah I, I i liked it a lot it was really good um, i'm glad y'all liked this <laughs> yeah I, I liked it a lot <laughs> but while we're on the topic of doom metal uh i do have a couple of recommendations that i might have that i might have thrown out there last week when we were picking albums uh the only other doom band that i'm familiar with is electric wizard who is very much heavily inspired by early Black Sabbath. Uh, so some probably a fan favorite album of their from them is uh, what what's the fucking uh, Dope Throne is really good. And okay. then a, per a personal favorite of mine is uh, Time to Die. That's a good album. I think uh, I've seen this album. I think I've seen this album somewhere. I might have listened to Dope Throne at some point. God damn. Yeah, kind of like the themes of a lot of Electric Wizard stuff is just like 70s satanic panic stuff. So some of the samples <laughs> that they use. Mm -hmm. Just just weed and Satan is their whole theme. Fucking bet. If you smoke the devil's lettuce, you'll go to hell before you die. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, everyone knows what I'm quoting, right? That fucking Mario thing, right? Yeah, the Mario ad. Yeah, from yeah, like yeah, yeah. The late eighties. Yeah. <laughs> and remember, kids, if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. <laughs> I was like, that sounds familiar. Oh yeah, it was fucking. What the hell is his name? What is that actor's name? Is it like uh, Lou Ferrigno or some Lou, shit? Yeah, no, Lou Ferrigno is the Hulk guy, but ah uh, fuck, it's Lou isn't something. it the guy who? Isn't it the guy that plays Mario in the Mario Super Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? I have to figure out what his name is. Yeah, now I have to, too, because it's going to fucking bug the shit out of me. <laughs> it's going to fucking bug me. Lou uh, Albano. Lou L Albano. L Lou Albano. He was Mario in the live action and in the animated. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a... Uh... He is a perfectly intelligent man with no faults whatsoever. Wrestling manager. That's why I knew him because he was. He also did wrestling stuff. <clears throat> Good God. Yeah. I with like like I said, my first into like Stallman's right. I, I'm pretty sure I did hear a little. Like I'm sure I've heard Stallman talk about doom metal in college because I was I did live with him my freshman year. But, like, the first shit that I listened to, like, actually went out of my way to listen to was Sleep. And Sleep I, is good. I loved them, and I love this album, and I'm just gonna have to keep listening to more. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess we'll finish with uh, Legends Never Die. So, um, let me bring it up again. God damn it, Spotify. Uh, so... Uh, Legends Never Die, I actually, when it came to Juice World, I started listening to him when um, Lucid Dreams came out. That was the first, like, time I had heard of him and, like, really fucking liked that song a lot. Um, but then there was a playlist that I think I've linked before is uh, Emo with 808s. It's a playlist made by the Finn McKenty, the guy who does the punk rock NBA. And it has a bunch of like 
it, it, he he kind of in a video he kind of goes into how he considers the he, he doesn't necessarily consider this emo rap but it's not like some of the other like trap rap or like other kind of it kind of like fuses like the culture of like <clears throat> early 90s punk i think and like the rap culture and it was it made me it made me want to listen to juice world more and when unfortunately um i never got to see him in concert before he passed away which i wanted to do the second i heard lucid dreams i never got a chance to but about the album i just if there's anything about the album that i'll say that that i don't like is just that it's very heavy on drug use but yeah. that also is a big part of his of who he was mm-hmm. um and also how he passed away um knowing the the ba- knowing knowing what happened to him kind of makes this album like it it, f- it felt weird cuz it feels like you're listening to like his inner thoughts be- like right before you like he he you you can hear as the album goes on that he like he knows something's going to happen <clears throat> he's like my time's coming like it's going to happen um just overall i really enjoyed the album i really enjoy his lyrics and just the vibe of the album the song that i really love um things like titanic uh the the song with hate the other side with marshmallows really good uh come and go and life's a mess it's pretty uh i guess i'll go next uh so yeah uh lucid dreams was also kind of my introduction to him and i've been meaning to listen to all of the album that that song is on um but i just haven't gotten around to it but listening to this, it reminds me of some of the stuff that Little Peep was doing, but it's obviously his own <clears throat> style here. And I like it. It's definitely a vibe. I liked the tracks that kind of had more of the, the hip-hop-influenced beats, and I liked the tracks that had some of the more guitar-driven stuff on it. And mm-hmm. you mentioned that track with Marshmallow. I really liked that one a lot, and Titanic is good. There's a lot of good songs on here. It's definitely a vibe, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's solid. I've listened to Juice World for a long time. Um, I never actually listened to this album all the way through until y'all posted it for this week. Mm-hmm. But um, some of my favorites off of this are I Want It, Fighting Demons, and uh, Hate the Other Side. Mm-hmm. The whole album's really good. And it it is his... It's depressing listening to it, knowing yeah. how he died. Because a lot of the themes on this album are like his drug abuse yeah and how he struggled with it and it's a very very dark message yeah i was looking say. back on it it seems like a cry for help sort of like a lot of lincoln park stuff yeah yeah it definitely sounded to me like he was it it it, it, it seems like it's always been kind of a theme in his music the kind of like de- the heavy depression and like mental illness themes as well and this one though really felt like it was like, "Hey guys, can you not understand what I'm saying to you?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I guess that'll do it for the albums for the week. I actually have a vinyl update this week. Holy shit! So oh, good God. I bought a couple things. <laughs> I only bought two things. Uh, so the first thing I don't actually have yet. I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered the reissue of. Tesseract's Altered State. I will hopefully pick that up on Tuesday. Uh, but the other one, I do have. So let me go grab it. Okay. Mike buys albums like I buy lightsabers. I got the Lincoln Park oh, Hybrid God. Theory <laughs> reissue. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I, I listened to... Uh, at least hybrid theory earlier, and it sounds good. Uh, I'm excited to listen to the the B side stuff that's on here. But yeah, I'm I'm glad I have this. Uh, Lincoln Park is super important to me. It's like one of the first bands yeah. I got into back in 2000. Uh, I have fond memories of listening to a, a VHS recording of the crawling music video that my <laughs> sister had recorded when I was like four. So yeah, crawling in my crawl. <laughs> <laughs> These crawls, they will not crawl. Also, good meme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, unless we have so, anything else. So, uh, Mike, 
Well, because yeah. I, I was, I saw that you posted. Did you get any further into everywhere at the end of time? I actually, yeah, we can talk about that. I only listened to uh, parts one and two. Um, Stephen, I'm not sure if you got a chance to listen to much of it. I have not yet, uh, because the claims adjuster just came out yesterday. So we've started repairing the house from the hurricane that hit a while back. Ah, uh, okay. Because. Uh, I was gonna say this this one the just like listening to the first two tracks or first two stages I mean was very interesting. Yeah. Um I literally one of my notes was during I think it was getting closer to the end of the stage one, I was like my note says it feels like I'm sitting I don't know how I got this descriptive. It sat it felt like I was sitting in an old armchair in like a study or a library room in a house with a record player and a fire it felt comforting and relaxing and i don't 100 percent that why. yeah, yeah like don't. that's spot on it, it feels like literally you are like shut off from the rest of the world there's nothing going on it's you a fire that's just crackling and a fucking album that is from the 40s or 50s and it it's weirdly relaxing, like yeah. you're like I don't I should not be this relaxed, but it it, it, it was it was weird. I'm yeah. gonna start putting this stuff on in the background at work this week, mm -hmm. okay? So I can um, hear it. But yeah, my my notes for this, uh, it's, like stage one is just very chill and mm -hmm. haunting, but there's like something creepy about it that you can't quite pinpoint. I keep mm -hmm. making this this. Uh, connection because it's just 100% spot on and I can't think of anything else to compare this to but if you've ever been to Disney World, Hollywood Studios mm -hmm. and rode the Tower of Terror and you're sitting in line, the cue music that they play is this exactly 100% I mm -hmm. I even posted like yeah, I like the that. loop in Discord because you listen to that and it's just, there's nothing else to compare this to, it's that and the, yeah. the aesthetic is like the same thing like 40s like southern california architecture like if if you've been in the tower of terror the room with the yeah. pre-show like that's the room that you're sitting in listening to this album that library study thing where they show the twilight zone thing with the tv it's it's that yeah I, um yeah there was a point where i was like i it's like like in into the second or third track i was like why do i feel like nostalgic why do i feel nostalgia for this music that came out 60 you know 60 plus years before i was born and i realized like close to the end of stage one i was like this music sounds very much like it'd be in a fallout game yeah yeah, yeah. And i have played fallout to death so i was like oh that's why this sounds even remotely like i've heard it before <laughs> like i got into like i think i got close i think i'm in, in i mean right now i'm in the middle of stage three and I'm not there yet. What I finished stage two and I noticed the biggest change I heard was that I said that it sounds more grim, more melancholy mm -hmm. and that it sounds like the music is like an echo, but it oh. sounds like it's the first reverber. Like imagine how an echo reverberates and you hear it more than once. Yeah. It sounds like you're catching only the first reverb and nothing after that. But, like, you still hear it, but it doesn't sound very close to you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, definitely, the changes on stage two are very subtle. Uh, for the most yeah. part, it's more of the same. And the description mm -hmm. I had is, if you're ever watching, like, an old movie from, like, the 40s or 50s, kind of kind of that age of movie, the sad parts of those movies, right? Or, like, tense bits or, or something. It's It's that. And there's mm -hmm. definitely a little bit more... Because there's vinyl crackle a little bit in stage yeah. one, but it's more pronounced in stage two like it's it's a bit heavier and there's slightly more distortion but it's just barely noticeable yeah i was gonna i was one of the things i noticed was that as the album as the stages go on the level of like distortion or like interference or like flaws with what, what i would consider a flaw with like a record or like with the actual record player like the flaws that in my head i would i would you know assumed to be that started to become more prevalent mm -hmm. and it it just started to come in more and more and i have 
on the stage three, like the first the first line I have in my notes is all caps. I swear this is the same song again. <laughs> like I got into my own head where like, am I listening to the same song just over and fucking over again? And then in the middle, I was like, is is it playing a song in reverse? <clears throat> Uh, I'm some, I'm not there yet, it, so I'm yeah. I'm excited. It 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 take it takes what it just it's it's such a weird like gradual change. Like it's not like an abrupt like oh okay now I'm now everything's fucked. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure once we get to four, five, and six, I'm like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But stages one, two, and three have just been so gradual. Yeah. Uh, Stallman has a question completely unrelated. Yep. Firefox is not letting him type the letter D, and it's invisible in every web page. How fix? The fuck? I, uh, I have no clue. That's a corrupted text file. Is is How the fuck in all did web you pages? manage to corrupt a text file? For, if I won't let me type the letter D, uh, clear the cache from Fire for Firefox, and then uninstall and reinstall the browser. Yeah, that's the, that's the only thing I can think to do. Clear cache, and if that doesn't work, uninstall, reinstall. Yeah, Firefox. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, mm-hmm. I think before we end out, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna we're gonna watch a little bit, a couple hours of the Force of Band Earth tour documentary. So if you wanna watch that, uh, hop in the Discord because we're gonna be watching it there. Uh, I'm not gonna use the secret stream because that's a little little too much to set up. It's easier to just share screen in Discord. Uh, mm-hmm. But before we close out, I'm going to show the trailer and then uh, we'll we'll end we'll end stream here. So, I did want to ask: Did we want to do a theme for next week? Parody yeah. bands. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you want to parody. do you want to do parody shit? Uh, you wanted me to pick something specific. I think when we were talking about this last week, what what was it? I because I, I yeah because I mentioned something and you were just like yeah we should do parody albums or something and I meow the jewels meow the jewels that's right I I could do that um that's not really so much a parody it's just kind of a remix album and LP was just really high when he came up with the idea for that so <laughs> close enough I guess fair <clears throat> um so I'll let y'all pick or am I going to do rap or rock. Um, I'm curious to see what your rap album pick would be. Yeah, that one sounds interesting. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, have either of you heard of MC Virgins? I have not. Don't think so, no. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, good God. <clears throat> oh, he might not even have a full album out yet. I gotta see. I gotta find a goddamn. I don't because I don't want to be like. I don't want to go generic and do <laughs> Weird Al, right? <sighs> oh, the only one available is his debut EP, and that's not the one I want to show. There are a couple of songs I wanted to post. I might just make a playlist of some of his singles and post it in the chat. Actually, I could do another album than Meow the Jewel. I don't really have anything that I guess you could be con- that you could consider parody. But there is that one Devin Townsend parody punk album that he did in the nineties. So maybe Devin has a parody album. Uh, yeah, it's called uh, Cooked on Phonics, and it's basically just him taking the shit out of like early punk music, I guess. Huh. Interesting. Well, since my uh plan has failed with MC Virgins, I will simply recommend a few songs and I will instead pick the rock album, I guess. Okay. Um yeah. <clears throat> So we will be listening to Ninja Sex Party's newest album. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> the Prophecy. Cool. I like them. I love Ninja Sex Party. Yeah, they're good. And this album is, like, really, really solid. Wait, is this considered a a parody? 
band? What Ninja Sex Party? Oh, absolutely. no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not them. No, sorry. I was I was talking out loud with um with I was looking online for like ideas for for parody bands, and I saw I saw a Death Clock. Yeah, they're kind of comedy. Kind of. I mean, well, because I, I well, do we consider comedy and parody like the same thing? I, I mean, yeah, I guess kind we of. Could. Okay. I mean, I I think maybe like the first <clears throat> two Death Clock albums could be considered that. I think the third Death album is the the more recent Death album is more serious. Mm. Yeah, so that's the third one. Okay. D- despite it having a song called "I Ejaculate Fire," I I think that that one's more <laughs> serious. <laughs> I ejaculate. Hey, that's a that's a good song. <laughs> it is, but it's still funny as hell to hear. I love it. Also, I just realized that all of my like stuff on my mixer like was turned way the fuck down. So if my mic sounded weird, I fixed it. I'm sorry. It sounded fine. Okay, because like my lows and my highs and my mid was turned all the way down for some reason, and I'm like, why is it doing that? So yeah, the prophecy is. Uh... One of my favorite albums. Alrighty. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the uh, the trailer for Earth Tour, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna close stream, and we'll we'll be hanging out in Discord, uh, watching the documentary. So if you want to watch it, join Discord and uh, come hang out. So, without further ado, here is here is trailer.